The Yankees made a rare move right at the All-Star break by firing and hiring a coach within 24 hours. But will it be enough to save their struggling offense? You are Locked On Yankees, your daily New York Yankees podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Yankees, which is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. I'm Stacey Gotsoulias, and this episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONMLB for $20 off your first purchase. Last-minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. With me, as always, is my producer, Steve Granato. Steve, happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. Happy All-Star break to all here on today's Locked on Yankees. Thanks for checking us out today. We're going to talk about last night's home run derby that's going to come up later on in the show. Of course, Garrett Cole, big news for the All-Star game. We're going to talk about that a little bit later and put it into historical context for you. Stacy first, of course, on Sunday, Dylan Lawson out as Yankees hitting coach in his second season. Uh, right after the game, it was made known uh, that he was not, uh, it was being relieved of his duties, I guess is the way to put it. Yeah. Um, of course. And then Monday, a quick hire, uh, ostensibly from our vantage point, mm-hmm. which I wanted to get into a little bit. Uh, <laughs> the Yankees hire Sean Casey. Let's talk about Dylan Lawson first. Stacy, historically, as we mentioned, uh, about some other stuff, but historically here, this is the first time Cashman has fired somebody in season, which is I feel kind of a big deal. Yeah. It's a really long time since they've fired someone in season. It's been, it's been a generation. Actually, (laughs) we've gone through a whole generation and considering George was still in charge of everything back then. It's kind of shocking. Yeah. The last time it happened in the Yankees system was 1995. Yeah. I mean, that is a big deal considering that's almost my whole life. Yeah. Yeah. And considering how often things were changing, you know, 78 through 90 with all the coaching changes uh mid-season you know guys are only coaching like 20 games getting fired new guys coming in so yeah this is this is actually a big deal well let alone that in today's sports world it's very common to see mid-season coaching changes oh yeah for better yeah. or worse and so we posted the news obviously on our uh, locked on yankees community tab uh which again hit subscribe we're not again hit subscribe so you guys can uh, be a part of that and you can always see our posts Uh, when things like that happen. And I I asked our Locked On Yankees viewers, how are you feeling about it? And, you know, we know the offense has been struggling. Duh. It's one of the worst in baseball, which is kind of weird, right? (laughs) Like no no one was anticipating that. Maybe some were anticipating a bad offense, but maybe like not bottom three. Right. Um, So it's strange. But the general consensus in our community of Yankees fans was – kind of warranted felt warranted but also felt scapegoaty Mm -hmm. your thoughts on the duality of that yeah i agree on the scapegoatiness of it (laughs) is that a word that's not a word but i i agree with that assessment because it's it's not entirely his fault these are baseball players they've been playing baseball since they're kids and The problem isn't Dylan Lawson. The problem is roster construction, but he's the scapegoat. Yeah. I mean, there, there is still something to be said. I I don't disagree with you, but there is still definitely something you said that there haven't been in season adjustments to change that. Mm -hmm. And I think what kind of turned this into motion, just a hair, maybe if I just had to venture a guess, I mean, the PR-ness of the Volpe chicken parm is honestly like we joke about it and it is kind of a joke. Yeah. And yes, it has turned it around, but that's just a bad look. It's just yeah. not a good look. That on top of the interview that he did not too long ago where he kind of just filled hot air. Like, look, these things, do they actually matter? Who really knows? I don't think the interview really matters, uh, but it's just not a good look. Yeah. I think that that. I'll say this much. It didn't help. Right. <laughs> right. Because the chicken parm thing, like you said, you know, people were treating it as a joke, but people were also thinking, well, then what the hell are the coaches doing if they didn't notice this about Bulby? And then it took one of his former teammates to notice this. And then all of a sudden, oh, hey, he started hitting again. Great. Because, you know, they look at film 
or video. I guess it's video now. It's not really film. It's not the 1930s. Um, they look at video. They they have their iPads. They try and figure out what's going on with these guys. And how did they not notice that? But Austin Wells did. Yeah, that's I mean, for a guy. And remember, it's not like Austin Wells is sitting at home on the couch. Austin right, Wells is he's also playing. playing every day. Yeah, yeah. Like, he's busy. <laughs> he's a busy guy. Yeah, he's, he's worried about his own career. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it doesn't help. Um, the Yankees hire Sean Casey. Sean Casey, uh, a great hitter in his day, uh, did not really hit for power in his career. Only like 130 homers in his career. Of course, he was with Cincinnati Reds for a big chunk of it. Uh, he was teammates with Aaron Boone back then. Uh, he's a Reds Hall of Famer. He's been in a couple of Hall of Fames, not the Hall of Fame, but like he had a he had a good career. Like definitely yeah. was a good major league hitter. This is the first time he's coaching. Stacy, your thoughts on hiring Sean Casey? Well, I made the joke on Twitter. I said, yeah, well, it worked out well the first time they hired a coach with no experience coming from TV. Boone. Um, but Sean Casey was a good hitter. I was looking at his stats. And like you said, it wasn't a lot of power, but he got on base a lot. And his average was great. And I'm hoping that he can inject some sort of lightning into their bums at this point because <laughs> we talk about it all the time they got to get away from the trying to hit the five run homer philosophy and in those few games where they did well and had those big innings and they were stringing together hits it wasn't necessarily because of home runs it was because of singles and doubles and just moving the line along and they need to do that on a consistent basis and they've proven that they can do it in some instances so i'm hoping that he can help them find their way because this well, team is not as bad as they're playing. They're not. Cur yes, I agree with you. I agree with you. Uh, the You mentioned the hitting philosophy. There was an interesting uh, part of this whole saga. This is coming from Andy Martino from SNY. I'm going to go ahead and leave the link to this uh, in the episode description about the Yankees hitting philosophy. In this article, he said, quote, in the immediate aftermath of the firing, the Yankees did not plan to alter the organizational hitting philosophy that Lawson summarized as, quote, hit strikes hard. In fact, the team is open to discussing with Lawson another role in the organization. That latter part doesn't matter much uh, as far as this conversation is concerned. It's a weird wrinkle. Just throwing <laughs> that out there. Uh, yeah. But the, the Yankees not planning to alter the organizational hitting philosophy, which you kind of mentioned there, the hit strikes hard, which in theory sounds good, but the Yankees hitting them hard maybe is leading to harder swings or, you know, whatever. There right. should be a deeper study on that than just two people on a podcast on YouTube talking about it. <laughs> but the, the, the thoughts of that, Stacey, um, I kind of want to point this out. The Yankees are backwards in their numbers this season. Mm -hmm. They are struggling against starters and doing better against relievers, which is the polar opposite of how, this usually all goes, right? That's really strange. Um, when you look at the top offenses in baseball, you look at the Braves, you look at the Rangers, the Dodgers, uh, arguably the Angels a little bit until recently. That's not the case, right? It's it's the other the opposite of it, right? You look at the top teams in OPS, it, it's Atlanta number one in baseball here at the at the break. And the Yankees, again, the weird part of this is they have some of their better numbers in the first inning. So they can get to a starter relatively early, the first couple of batters and then fall off late, which I'm sure has something to do with the, the lack of a back end of that lineup. Yeah. But still overall, the philosophy there is not lining up with conventional wisdom, right? Conventional stats, uh, which to your point, the five run Homer joke, but actually, right is not is not viable so that's why when we talk about sean casey being the hiring i think it might be and this is just conjecture here obviously it might be a bit more of a mood lifter mm. than an actual move move to right. a change in philosophy here because by all accounts sean casey is a very bubbly light personality and and is a good vibes and like I, i've never seen anything bad said about sean casey I'll, I'll put it that way and every time i see him it's he's you know he's having a good time yeah. and i think that might be part of it especially considering like hey we're not changing our philosophy here as far as offensive philosophy and it's would line up because sean casey doesn't necessarily line up with the Yankees current philosophy of home run hitting. So it's, it's kind of a weird sign, uh, signing, uh, uh, I guess, signing, uh, hiring, yeah. 
for me, at least in that regards. Your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I just, you know, you had texted me about it and I had no idea what was going on because I was writing for an hour and I didn't even look at Twitter, nothing. So I thought, what is happening here? And I said, Sean Casey. And I'm like, oh, well, he was teammates with Boone when they were on the Reds. So maybe that had something to do with it. And I kind of thought it was a strange choice, but um, reading more about it, I thought, okay, I mean, it's fine. But what you were saying about the struggling against the starters and doing better against the bullpen goes along with the joke that I always say in blowout losses, they always tend to score those late runs in the latter innings when those teams are not putting their best bullpen guys in in the ninth inning because they're up by, you know, 14 runs and then the Yankees That's decide fun. to score. Yeah, they're just, it's such an odd offense. And I just hope that me, I don't know, maybe this might help but yeah i don't like the whole they're not changing the philosophy because that's the problem yeah it's like you <laughs> said it's not just one guy yeah just you know get rid of the bad apple and the rest of the bunch is fine yeah uh, it's an organizational philosophy which if we're watching how the draft has been going which we're gonna have a full analysis on tomorrow's show of uh, we're watching the draft and uh, look like a lot of these kids are good ball players, and who knows how their careers are going to go. That's how the draft always works. But like they skew towards the heavy hitters and they have been over the last few years, Jason Dominguez, heavy hitter, Spencer Jones, heavy, heavy hitter. Um, so we'll see, we'll see how, how it all shakes out. Stacy, another part of this, of course, more quotes coming about it. Uh, Aaron Boone is staying put. He ain't going nowhere. That's uh, the story here as well. Also from that Andy Martino, uh, an article from him. So, I mean, it is what it is. This is how it, it's going to be. Um, it would be pretty shocking to see the Yankees at this point fire a manager mid season. Yeah. Again, that maybe hasn't the, happened in a really long time either. <laughs> yeah. Maybe at the end of the year, maybe at the end of the year, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to dip my toe into that water just yet. Cause it's, you know, there's a long way to go still. We still got a lot of baseball to play and the Yankees are still seven games over 500, which yeah. kind of gets lost in this whole shuffle. Um, I know you guys have lots of thoughts on this. So let us know in the comment section. Of course, thank you guys for, for commenting on our community tab. Uh, people seem to be fairly excited about Sean Casey, at least in our community uh, here on YouTube. Uh, We'll see. We'll see how it all shakes out. I mean, we'll, he's only signed through 2023. And then after that, flip a coin. Uh, let us know down below how you're feeling about all this stuff. Of course, you can drop your questions for Fan Mail Friday. Fan Mail Fridays every Friday here on Locked on Yankees. If you want to skip the line for that, of course, you can join our subtext. All the information is in the episode description. There's a 14-day free trial and a ton of other perks as well. Thank you for supporting the show. We're going to step aside. Coming up, we've got to talk about Garrett Cole and some history that was just made. Buying tickets to your favorite events shouldn't be stressful. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the music, sports, comedy, and theater near you. Steve's been using it this season, and he loves it. And if it's good enough for him, it's good enough for you. They have killer deals on last-minute tickets and their best price guarantee, so you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun you'll have. Game Time also has flash deals and last-minute tickets. It's easy to find and buy tickets for every kind of event in your area, and they even give you images of your seat view so you know what you'll be seeing. With their lowest price guarantee and even event cancellation protection, Game Time is the best place to buy tickets in just a matter of seconds two taps and you're set snag the tickets without the stress with game time download the game time app create an account and use code locked on mlb for twenty dollars off your first purchase terms apply again that's code locked on mlb for twenty dollars off download the game time app today last minute tickets lowest price guaranteed <laughs> Stacy to the everydayers out there, they already know. We just said it a second ago. Coming up on Wednesday, draft analysis. The Yankees will wrap up their draft today, final day of said draft. And uh, we got to talk about it. We already talked a little bit about it. We talked about the number one pick on yesterday's show, uh, the first round pick, I should say. <laughs> um, so more coming up. We're going to have a full breakdown of what the Yankees ended up doing uh, in this draft. So you can make sure to hit subscribe. For that, you can catch the whole season, by the way, on Sirius XM, including the All-Star Game, which is later on today. Stacy, in that All-Star Game, we're going to see something we have not seen in 22 years. A Yankee on the mound to start. Garrett Cole named the American League All-Star starter. Are you surprised? I'm a little surprised. I am. I'm surprised. I didn't think they would do it. 
but they did. <laughs> and it's really cool for him. I know he's very excited about it. It's awesome. It's, this yeah. is like a bucket list item for him, which is great. Uh, he this is a sixth selection to the all-star game. Uh, it's going to be his second appearance in a game. And of course, the first time he appears on the mound in the all-star game as a Yankee. Yeah, no pressure. No pressure. <laughs> well, at least he's on the other coast, so like, yeah, no, no booing going yeah, on like, at least in, in his well, own ballpark. Yeah, no booing will bl- plenty of booing will be happening in Seattle because they don't like yeah, the Yankees. That's so. why I said in his own ballpark. I've yeah, rescued that one. Yeah, uh, he's gonna face off with Zach Gallen, uh, D back starter. Zach Gallen is having a phenomenal season, man. Mm-hmm. Like, he is front ru- one of the front runners for uh, NL Cy Young. Uh, really, really impressive season for Zach Gallen, Stacy. Garrett Cole is the 12th Yankee who will start an all-star game. Probable, probable at this point. Um, I have the list here. Did you look at it yet? I did. Dang it. I was going to ask you to try it. Well, maybe, maybe I'll still test you. Who was the first ever Yankee to start, start an all-star game without Damn you it. looking at it? Don't look. I'm looking at your eyes. I can <laughs> see your eyes. Damn it. No. First, um, first ever I, Yankee to start an all-star game. I don't think I would have known that. I don't think I would have known it. It's Lefty Gomez, but I don't think I would have known that. I would have assumed it would have been someone else before that. <laughs> Lefty Gomez started six straight All-Star games. Um, 1933, the first one ever, not just the Yankee starter, first All-Star game ever, Lefty Gomez yeah. was on the mound. Uh, 11 other Yankees to ever start, Red Ruffing, Spud Chandler, Hank Barrowy, Vic Rashi. I mean, these are some names that I've never heard of, I'm not going to lie. Mm-hmm. Um Whitey Ford, Bob Turley, Mel Stottlemyre, Jimmy Key, David Wells, and of course, Roger Clemens, the most recent in 2001. I mean, this is really cool stuff, man. And for a bit of a roller coaster season, I wouldn't say it's the Incredicoaster, but you know, it's, it's a, it's a, been a little rocky. May was definitely rocky for Garrett Cole. Uh, but for how that April went, man, yeah. I mean, that alone is one of the high, uh, maybe the highlight of the season yeah so far i will say i'm not old enough to have seen mel stottlemyre meyer in 1969 i've only seen jimmy key david wells and uh roger clemens start all-star games so but um yeah some of those names you know whitey ford did it twice vic rashi did it twice it's you know red roughing also twice but lefty gomez man six times (laughs) that's amazing (laughs) there were less players at the time there were less teams less teams yeah um but yeah i mean this is this is super awesome uh you know the starters usually go an inning maybe two so we'll see how long he ends up going here tonight but just for the opportunity to do so uh it's really really awesome man and it's it's you you we shouldn't ever not talk about this type of thing uh Cause you never know. You never know. Like if you're ever going to be there again, you never know if you're going to get that opportunity ever again. Right. Roger Clemens didn't win the Yankees uh, a second time. Uh, David Wells too. You know, there are some guys in here that are kind of one-off all-stars. Garrett Cole, obviously not one of them, but um, getting the start, you are an all-star among all-stars. Yeah. I mean, that's a big deal. Um, you know, he was on with uh, a rod, David Ortiz, Jeter, and uh, Kevin Burkhart, Fox, and they asked Cole how he would pitch to those three guys. And uh, he mentioned how he faced Ortiz um, and that he said that Jeter ducked him in a doubleheader because (laughs) Jeter played in the first game of the doubleheader and then Cole started the second one and Jeter didn't play in the second game of the doubleheader. And I thought that was really funny. (laughs) That's great. Uh Great. Um, (laughs) Other news here, all-star game-wise, it came out on Sunday. Aaron Judge will not be going to the all-star game we anticipated that possibly being the case he hasn't played in 600 days or whatever it has been (laughs) uh so it does it makes sense that he's not going um he said he wanted to stay back and focus on rehabbing and stuff which how much rehab is he actually doing i i I mean last account we heard he's lightly swinging like dry hacks like i mean whatever man it's it's your life you do what you want with it uh, I'm not going to judge you, but still. I mean, uh, I wouldn't want to fly all that way to not play in a game. I get it. Sure. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Yeah, <laughs> if they were like, let's like in Oakland or something, and then all I had to do was fly to Seattle, I'd be like, okay, yeah, you can do that. Or sense. like if the All Star game was in like Washington, it could hop on the Acela. It wouldn't be a big deal. Yeah, sure, that makes sense. <laughs> um, Stacy, we've been doing bold predictions over the last couple of weeks for Yankees games. I lead you in that category, two points to one. I've been keeping tally of uh, of who's better. Uh, and it's me, uh, but I wanted to do some all-star game bull predictions. So we can have a little bit fun on tomorrow's show. Stacy, do you have any bull predictions for the all-star game? 
the National League's going to win for the first time in nine years. Oh, you took mine. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> oh, man. I feel bad for the National League because now they're going to lose. <laughs> now that I said that. Um. Okay. <laughs> mine. I'm going to go Shohei. Hmm. Ah, he's not going to homer. Okay. But he's going to hit a ball at least 180. Nine miles an hour. Oh, that. oh, that's interesting. <laughs> it's gonna smoke one. Just okay. absolutely rip one. At least hundred and nine. Okay. I was gonna say hundred and eight, but I went a little bolder. <laughs> hundred and nine. <laughs> there you go. Those are our All Star Game predictions. Yeah. Uh, drop them down below. Let us know. Do you like watching the All Star Game? Do you like watching the Home Run Derby? Do you, is this the festivities thing? Are you a futures game guy? Do you like watching the All Celebrity Game? Uh, I don't ever watch the Celebrity Softball Game, but I'd love to play in one. Uh. <laughs> But yeah, I, I don't ever watch it. Do you watch the Slurry Softball game? No. I mean, maybe accidentally when they replay it at like two in the morning, yeah, yes, three days yes, later. After the derby? Yeah. After the derby when you're like grabbing something to eat. And then, yeah. yeah. And I'm like, oh, yeah. this happened already, didn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. It's exactly. That's the only time anyone ever watches it. Or yeah. like on Instagram by accident. You're like, oh, Jojo Siwa hit a single. Cool. I mean, my bro yeah, my brother was like, you know who jo Jojo Siwa is? I'm like, yeah. He's like, they had her mic'd up during the celebrity softball game and she said the F word. I'm like, cool. Fun. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> um again drop your all-star game predictions down below of course the home run derby last night so when we come back let's talk about it this episode is brought to you by better help therapy is all about deepening your self-awareness and understanding because sometimes we don't know what we want or why we react the way we do until we talk through things better help connects you with a licensed therapist who can take you on that journey of self-discovery from wherever you are if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists at any time for no additional cost. Find more balance with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash LockedOnMLB today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash LockedOnMLB. Back now on Locked On Yankees. Hey, don't forget you can catch the entire season this year on Sirius XM. You guys already know that. Download the Sirius XM app for free today. Stacy, home run derby. Okay, I just wanted to get this like out in the world. I think the home run derby is maybe the best thing Major League Baseball does. <laughs> I think it is too, actually. I, I I almost think they shouldn't even bother with the All Star game at this point because the home run <laughs> derby is so much better. <laughs> it really is. Like it's always uh, since they redid the format and everything. Like I loved it before, but it definitely was getting it gotten stale. Plus, it all always lasted like five hours in the old yeah, format. Way too long. Yeah. Yes. And <laughs> I mean, this like I think. I mean, this one was another great one, right? I mean, like watching Adley swing switch was awesome. The AL East, very well represented. Uh, yeah. Very well represented. Yep. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I just like, yeah, it, it's just like this one. I don't think it was like the best one over the last couple of years. I think the Harper one was great. Yeah. The walk-off for Harper was amazing. Uh, but I don't know, man. I just... I, I always like kind of forget about the Derby and then the Derby shows up. I'm like, Oh yeah. Derby's tonight. And then I watch the Derby. I'm like, God, that is awesome. Man. That's <laughs> so good. Every time. Which uh, broadcast did you watch? Cause I watched the sketch, the stat cast one. Yeah, I did too. I, yes. Word to the wise, watch the stat cast one. It is a hundred times better every time. Yep. <laughs> I haven't watched the regular one in like three years. I watch the stat, like, stat cast one every year now. Yeah. I love it. Cause they show you the home run distance. They show you the angle of the ball going out. So you pretty much have an idea. Like it's a little bit behind the other broadcast, but that doesn't matter. And uh, yeah, it's just great. And woof, some of these guys um, really hit that ball hard. Like it was just, I mean, Luis Robert in that first round was just like. Yeah. Hanging around at like 110. Yeah. I was like, holy cow. And like you said, with Rushman, that was great. And I was kind of hoping he'd switch. And when he did, I joked on Twitter because, you know, he hit 20 from the right side and seven from the left side in, you know, how many seconds, like a minute or how many seconds yeah. was it? And I was like, maybe he should have been <laughs> from the left side the whole time. But amazing first showing for him. And I want yeah. him in it every year. If he's going to do the switch thing, that is so cool. 
I uh, I thought he was going to switch at the timeout, but yeah. Worked, anyway, mm-hmm. uh, Julio first round forty one. This so here's like the only I think if I can have one like, any gripe at all with the Derby, it's just that they get tired. Yeah, that's the only problem with it. Yeah. So I mean I don't if they don't change the format, I'm completely happy with it. I'm going to watch it every single year. I'm going to love it every single year. Uh, maybe trimming the first round a little bit to like two to maybe save some stamina for later going yeah. like maybe like 230 230 and then two yeah because they are they are exhausted man yeah yeah because that new format makes it so they are that exhausted i mean it's just pitch taking like 100 pitch, pitch 130 150 hacks like yeah. <laughs> if you go the whole way it's a lot of hacks man and, That's they're, really and they're like daddy hacks like they're not <laughs> like all right well i'm gonna go the other way yeah <laughs> Yeah. Although I did, I did find uh, Mookie Betts slightly amusing just because, um, and I joked on Twitter, I said, you know, Mookie Betts was basically like, it's an honor to be nominated. He was just like, I'm happy to be here. This is great. <laughs> but I, I'm yeah. not, I have no shot right now. So I'm just going to hit the ball. It's fine. I don't need to take a timeout, whatever. I'm here. This is cool. And he was like soaking it in. <laughs> yeah. uh, I saw that. He said that he felt he was done after five swings. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Same, same bro. Same bro. <laughs> I, wouldn't, uh, I don't even think I'd be able to take more than two swings really geez i mean god it's just so exhausting watching them <laughs> yeah good good bracket this year that was yeah. a great bracket yeah that was uh, it was a I lot th- of fun i think they've done a really good job just to keep praising major league baseball the brackets have gotten better too like just overall the stars are there they'll get some youth i like that they have the local like the the, the home ballpark gets a player like julio was obviously awesome like the julio chance is great like i mean like I liked every player in the Derby, you know, like I just like, I, I love Randy Rosarena. Like he's, he's one of my favorite players, if not my favorite player in baseball overall, especially after the world baseball classic, like, man, I just love that guy. I, he was my pick. Who, did you have a pick by the way? We didn't, we didn't do it on the show. Oh, um, actually. Yeah. Who did I think was going to win? Um, I thought Vlad jr. Was going to do it. Oh, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah, no, I no, I did. I just had a feeling because he hadn't, I don't know. And, you know, he's been hitting home runs a little more frequently lately. And I just, I don't yeah. know. I figured I thought Mookie would have done better just because he's been pummeling the baseball over the last couple of days. Yeah, yeah, I thought so too. And uh, I wrote that in my article about the home run derby. I said, you know, I, I said if they had a home run derby uh, and Mookie batted leadoff, he might do better. Because... <laughs> well, if he faced like 96, then yeah. he would have hit two home runs yeah. immediately. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, Mookie's on fire lately, man. He's crazy. So same with Freddie. Like Mookie, Freddie, and Max Muncy right now in LA are just like going crazy. Yeah. Um, anyway, great home run derby. Let us know your thoughts on the home run derby down below. And uh, would you would do you do you accept my changes? Just kind of trim it a little bit, just ever so slightly tweak it. Yeah, just to make it so you know someone like Julio, if they do get forty and only two thirty, maybe they. Will, yeah. I don't know. It's just the forty one though. My God, when he hit the, you know, my, was I was watching cool. with my brother and he was just like, it's like he's not only just hitting a lot of home runs, he's hitting them really hard and far. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, he's really demolishing that ball. So. <laughs> Yeah, absolute monster. Yeah. Uh, again, you can drop that in our comments. And of course, you can also drop your questions for fan mail Friday. Reply to that pinned comment down below. You guys know about subtext. If you hung around the whole time, you guys already know about subtext. That's also in the episode description. Um, and thank you guys so much for checking us out here today. Of course, we have plenty of uh, feels like off season content, but it's uh, mid season content <laughs> coming your way. So make sure to hit that subscribe button. We have locked on Yankees content all week long. And that's going to do it for today's episode. I'm Steve Granato. And I'm Stacey Gatsoulias. We'll see you tomorrow.